Zero Accounting Software 2023 Enter Service Items. Get ready because it's time to become an accounting hero with Zero 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom zero homepage going into the new company file we set up in a prior presentation, that being Get Great Guitars. In prior presentations, we set up the company file and now we want to be entering the beginning balances into the system as well as the foundational items necessary to make the data input forms that are in the plus item up top as easy as possible to populate. Now these are the beginning balances we're going to enter into the system, not with one big journal entry, but rather going to each account you know, like one at a time and looking at the specific needs related to each of those accounts. Now with the inventory account here, we have a specific issue with relation to it. And that is going to be the inventory items if we're tracking those within the zero system in a perpetual inventory method. To put those in, we have to use items or inventory items that will support this number by inventory items if we're tracking it within the system. Now, before we actually enter the inventory items, which are probably the most difficult items to enter into the system, let's first think about service items. The service items represent things that we sell that are services that don't have an underlying uh, inventory component. So we don't have to track them in inventory, but they're going to be input in a similar fashion and they are easier to input than the inventory items. So then we'll go into the more difficult inventory items following the service items. So in other words, if I go back on over to zero over here, the service items primarily are designed to make your data input for the invoices and uh, the the money in receive money, which are which are kind of like the cash register type of transactions easy. So if you imagine someone like at a cash register saying they're going to receive money and they're trying to input that into the system. Well, to do that, I have to enter a bank account. So let's go up to that again. If you imagine that they're going to have an invoice and you're trying to make the invoice as easy as possible to populate, you would like down here for them to be able to select the item. So instead of just creating the item as you go, that's going to be much more complex. You want the item in the system. Now, a lot of times if you're a service company, like an accountant or like a, uh, like a lawyer, then you, you often think you're just gonna, you're gonna charge people on an hourly rate. But just note that anytime that if you're in a service industry that you can standardize your billing system, that's usually gonna make it easier for you to do the billing process. So for example, if you're a bookkeeper and you're able to say, hey, look, I'm gonna charge people for however many transactions I happen to do so that you have a quantifiable amount, then you can set up a service item that represents that number of transactions, which will populate the amount for the work that was done in that format. Otherwise, you can try to bill people if you're in like a, a job cost service industry, like a, like a CPA firm or a tax firm or a law firm, you can have a different billable rate for the different uh, individuals that you are billing for. And that's a common way that you would have that as well. And again, you would set up the service items so that you can just select those items possibly when you're actually doing the billing process. So let's go through that setting up the items. We can go to the business dropdown and we want to then go into the products and services, products and services. And so we're going to be looking at the service items. So you've got the little video that you can use to have the service item here. We can enter the service items one at a time. So if you just have a few of them, you can say new item. And this is the population screen. You have a code. 
you've got the name. If you're tracking the inventory in the system, then you're gonna select track inventory. So we'll talk more about that later. Tracking inventory makes it more complex of a thing to be doing. With these ones, we're not tracking inventory because we're just talking about service items and not inventory items. Purchase, add item to bills, purchase orders, and other purchase transactions. Now, if you're talking about non-inventory items, you might not even have purchase type stuff. You're only gonna have the sales stuff where you have add items to invoices, quotes, and other sales transactions. You've got the sales price, the account that's gonna be hit when you put that into the system. If there's tax related to it, you've got the tax rate and then the description. That way, whenever you make an invoice, this will populate basically automatically. However, we have many of them we want to enter. So, so this is our list here. And so if you have a lot of stuff you're gonna enter into the system, you might wanna import it using a, a CSV file or, or a spreadsheet. So that's what we'll do here. So to do that, and this could work with different things as well. You might have a similar system if you're importing a lot of customers, you're importing a lot of vendors, uh, your inventory uh, inventory items that we, we might be importing. We might use a similar type of process instead of doing them one at a time. We can pull that information in. You can imagine getting this information from your prior accounting software, possibly, possibly exporting it to an Excel worksheet and then trying to put it into your current system in this fashion. Or you might just find it easier to populate this in an Excel worksheet than to do each of these one at a time in this kind of format. So let's go to import and I'm going to say import items and it says prepare file to import, download the template and add your items to update items already in zero, export items to CSV and edit them in spreadsheet. Existing items will be uploaded when the value uh, in item code matches the code of an item that already exists. Up to 1000 items can be imported each time. So here's their template. Here, their tips don't change or delete the column headings. Uh, enter the account code only. Enter the tax rate exactly as it appears in zero. Uh, if you're adding tracking inventory items, enter both the inventory asset account and cost of goods sold account codes. Okay, so let's go ahead and download the template. So notice that, that there's two ways that you might do this. If you have your information, this is the template. If you have your information in a spreadsheet already, you might try to save this spreadsheet as a CSV file. You might go to the file tab up top and save as and try to convert this to a CSV file, which is quite easy to do, a comma delimited and then upload it. However, it's likely that your headers are not exactly the same as the headers on the example file. So, so another way that you might do it is you might take the example file and just copy and paste what's on your worksheet to match the headers on the example file. You can't really see the headers right now because this is a CSV file instead of an Excel file, but we can select, for example, these columns. I'm gonna double click up top. And so there's, there's our headers. And so there we go. Now I can add some formatting to it, but the formatting will be deleted when I save it as a CSV file. So sometimes it might be easier to save it as an Excel file and then save it again as a CSV file once you're done formatting it. So let me show you how that might look. You might go to file, save as, and then I'm gonna go to the old desktop, desktop, and we're gonna put this into zero. These are gonna be the inventory items. Notice it's saving it as a CSV file, even though I opened it in Excel. I'm gonna save it as an Excel file so it will put my formatting in place just temporarily until I get my formatting the way I want it. Then I will change that back to a CSV file. All right, so here we have it. Now, one thing you might do is wrap the headers because that might make it a, a little bit easier to see. So I might wrap the headers, which is a, which is a uh, something that won't be in the CSV file, won't pull through, but it's useful. That wasn't wrap, wrap is, there it is. So now maybe I can get all these kind of on a, on a page. 
Uh, hold on a second. I'm going to make them all the same size here. There we go. All right. So there is that. All right. So then we have the item code. We've got the item name. We've got the purchase description. So we don't really need a purchase description yet because we're not purchasing the service items. That's really for the inventory's items. We got the purchases unit price. Again, purchasing isn't really what we're gonna have here for the sales items. This is where it gets more complex for inventory. Another purchase uh, account, purchases uh, tax rate, sales description, sales unit uh, price. So we need the sales description. We need the sales unit price. We need the sales account, the sales tax uh, rate. We don't. We possibly don't have one. I'm gonna imagine we don't have one here. Uh, we'll deal with sales tax in future presentation inventory account and then cost of goods sold we don't have any inventory of cost of goods sold we have to deal with either all right so i'm not going to have any item code i'm not going to have and then the item name i'm just going to copy in these columns as we go now these are very generic names they sound more like uh <laughs> like if i was uh, dealing with a car or something than a guitar shop but we'll also deal with other service items later uh, when we get to when we get to uh, imagining that we have guitar instructors, which will mirror a system that you might have in like an accounting firm or law firm. But for now, just to get some items in there, we're going to use these. So I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to put that in the description. Boom. Make this a little larger. There's that. And then that's going to be the the item name. I should have put it in the item name. Let's put it there. And the purchase description it doesn't really matter i'll put it there but i don't really need it the sales description is what i need i'm going to put the same thing there that's what's going to show up on the actual sales uh area and then the the sales price the sales price i have here are going to be these so i'm just going to copy the amounts of the price from my worksheet this is how much we're going to sell them for so sales sales unit price and then the sales account now i want to make sure i pick up the proper account from my chart of accounts so i'm going to go into uh, my chart of accounts here let's go into the drop down and say where's uh my chart of accounts under business and then we want to go down to the i'm sorry accounting and then go to your chart of accounts and let's check out what they gave us for revenue accounts it's kind of cool that they give us this little breakout up top, which is a little bit easier to kind of jump over to revenue over here. And then we have sales. Now, normally sales is used for inventory items oftentimes. So I'm going to have service. That's the name of the account. So I'll just copy that here. Will they let me copy it? I'll just service. I could spell service without copying it. <laughs> That's not too service. It's not beyond my spelling capabilities, is it? Sales account possibly it is possibly it is sales tax inventory asset account we don't need an inventory and we don't need cost of goods sold so the only question is on the item code should i put the same thing in the item code on the name let's put this in the item code too we'll just have the same item code because that's this is the shorthand thing that that pulls it up and this is the the item title the full title and in the purchase description, we don't really need, but it would be basically the same here. Sales description, that's what's going to actually show up on the invoice in the description, the sales receipts, and so on. So let's save this. And I'm going to say, how do I say, where's my save button? Save it. And then I'm going to say save as and save it as a CSV file, converting it from this point to a CSV file, the format used to upload to zero. So I'm going to say file save uh save copy browse i'm going to put it in the same place but this may this time make it a csv comma delimited file boom shock alaka let's save it uh auto save for you get out of here all right let's close it up now i put it into this file so if i go into this file now i've got hold on it's not there okay so here they are so this is my actual excel file 
and this is the CSV file. So you'll notice when I open the CSV file, it looks similar, but it's not exactly the same. It's, it'll erase the formatting. So see, I opened it up and it basically took all the formatting away because that's the cleanest file in essence to be able to upload to not mess zero up when it's trying to upload it. So let's go ahead and upload it now. So I'm gonna go back on over here and we're gonna go back into our, our products and services and then simply upload our products and services. Let's import items and uh, import, we downloaded. So I'm gonna select the item, boom. And there it is. So the CSV file is showing up. So let's pull that in, inventory item, save it. And it's given me an error saying my sales account service isn't a valid code from the chart of account. So I think they want the code number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into my chart of accounts and say, all right, chart of accounts. Let's check that out. I'm going back to my revenue. Say K PASO. So service, I think they want the account number 4300. So let's go back on over here and say sales account 4300. Let's try the account number because I, I put service. I spelled it right, didn't I? <laughs> I knew it. I didn't spell service. See if service. All right, I'm going to copy that down. And let's try that. Let's see if it gives me another error. Save as a little trial and error to see if it gives me an error. Double error on the. This is going to be numero trace this time and then we will give it another shot give it another shot all right so back on over here we're going to go to the we're going to go back to the products and services and we will then go into the import items and select inventory item three and cross the fingers there it is import summary four or four items will be imported all right do it do it zero you go zero so if i go into that there they are uh here's the code here's the diagnostic here's the sales price so if i go into these items here i i can ar archive it or i can delete it if i go into to them it says your product service has a new look so here's the purchase, here's the description, sales price, sales account, latest transactions down below. So it gives us a nice little summary of the transactions. And then we can edit the item if we so choose. And now we see it in that format we saw before where we have the diagnostics, you know, I just put a generic thing, no inventory tracking. We don't really need the purchase stuff at all because we're not gonna be purchasing these items, but it's not really gonna hurt anything. Uh, so we'll leave it checked off sales item, sales price. There's the account. It wanted the code or the number. Uh, we're not going to deal with the taxes for this one. We might get into sales tax in the United States, which is similar to like a usage tax in other, uh, parts of the country. So there's a similar concept to it, but I'm, I'm going to imagine here that we have the tax on the inventory items and not the sales. On, on the service items. So we'll talk about sales tax later. And then we've got the diagnostic. So this didn't do anything to the actual financial statements because uh, they're not inventory items, but it does make it easier for us when we enter an invoice, for example, to populate the invoice, because now we should be able to select the item here and the item should be driving the amount. So you can imagine then when you do your billing or when you have someone else doing the billing that it should be straightforward if you have your items set up properly. And again, I would recommend if possible to move away from just a simply billing rate based on hours. If you can like bill based on what was done, if you can quantify your billing so that you can, you can easily figure it out. You can show exactly what you did to the client and possibly have someone else do the billing process because they can quantify, you know, the billing on something other than just hours. But sometimes you can't get away from the hours. And again, you make your service items for 
hourly service or something like that. And you just got to count the hours and bill out the hours. So this, this leads into the next step, which we will do, which is the inventory items, which has an added level of complexity if we have beginning balances already, because the inventory items and cost that we have on our system should add up to this amount and we should be able to generate a sub ledger report showing those inventory items by item that will tie out to what's on the balance sheet. 